Hi guys, good morning. So this is my first video regarding your path. So as part of today's session, we are going to see how we are going to read the data from an Excel file and store it in a data table. So though this is the Excel file which I am going to use it today to read the value from it here. So let's jump into new iPad. <laughs> I'm going to use a sequence. As you know, you can get started in UI path in different ways. A different kinds of workflows can be used in a sequence, a flowchart and all that. So as part of today's session, I'm going to use a sequence. So I drag and drop the sequence. And then to read an Excel data, we have to use a read range. So when you type in the read range activity, you can see the read range option present in the two different hierarchy. A read range from the Excel and read range from the workbook. If you are using a read range from an Excel, you have to use an Excel application scope and inside that you have to use a read range. In today's session, I am going to use a read range from a workbook. So once I drag and drop a read range activity, so let's understand the properties. In the first place, you have to browse the Excel file which you wanted to read it. So I'm browsing the Excel file which I wanted to use it for today. And you, you can look for other properties which is added here. So if you see in my Excel which has an header column available, if you have your Excel which has a headers, Make sure that you click on headers option and then the range. So by default, it will be in a sheet one. In our case also, the data is present in the sheet one. So as you know, each Excel workbook can have a multiple sheets. It is not necessary that you have to read the data every time from the sheet one. So you may have a data present in a, a different Excel sheets as well. So you can specify which Excel sheet specifically that you wanted to read it. So in our case, it is present in the sheet one. I'm not doing any modifications on that. And the next thing is a range. So if you see it in an Excel, the data is present from an A1 cell to a, you know, a G11 cell. Suppose if you wanted to read it every time, only the data will be present in only in this, uh, you know, specific cell. You can even mention the range. Suppose if your data is dynamic in nature, maybe today you have a 10 data and tomorrow you have 100 data and day after tomorrow may you get thousands of data. So if your data is changing in nature, or you make sure that you wanted to read the entire sheet irrespective of the range. So make sure you remove the range which is present by default. So when you keep it empty, what will happen is Irrespective of the data is present in any specific cell, it will read and complete data from an Excel sheet mentioned. Okay. And the next thing is an output. If you see it here, let me expand it. So the output is looking in a data table format. Right now, it is empty. So once I read it, I have to create a variable. To create a variable, the shortcut key can be used in. Control plus key. When you create a variable, now I'm going to name my variable dt excel data. If you can check in my variable section, you can see the variable is created with the data table variable type. So now I have read all the data which is present in the specific Excel and have stored in the data table. Now to iterate through an each value in a data table, the activity which you need to use is for each. So I'm using a for each in the row in data table because my input value is present in the data table type. So you can see once I dropped it for each row in the data table. So it is looking for an, uh, you know, a variable which holds a complete data. 
So in our case, the variable dt Excel data, which holds a complete value from an Excel file. So what will happen is when it is iterating through this data table, this current row variable, which is has by, you know, which is uh, there by default, which holds a value of your each row value. For example, you can see it here in our Excel data, it has 11 steps. So when it is iterating the first time, this current row value, which holds the first row value, when it iterate the next time, it hold the second row value, a third row value. So like that. So now it will, so now this for each is responsible for iterating a each row value in a Excel data table. Okay, now it, it is, it will be iterating. How do I get to know, like, how do I see a each value? So you can even use this in a further automation. Maybe if you wanted to give this value into a, any application, you can provide it in your for each sequence. Now, in demo purpose, I'm going to use a message box. So I'm using a message box. So what I told you, the current row value was responsible for holding your each row data, right? A current row dot an item. So let's see, uh, you can even display your data in two ways. One is by using your column name or by using your column index. What if, if your Excel data doesn't have a column name? So the option to use is a column index. The indexing starts from 0, 1, 2, like that. So let's see, uh, I'm, I'm, I want to display your first name, which is present in my first column. That is my 0 index. So I have to mention a zero here. So which is my first column will be displayed. So you know the message boxes look for a string value. So I'm converting into a string. So you can see my errors are gone. Now my program is ready for the execution. Let's run the file. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to close this. Yeah. So it shows an error. The process cannot access this file because it is being used by the another process. Because we are using a read range activity and from under a uh, workbook. So you make sure that your Excel data which you are using is closed. So now I'll run the file. So you can see in the message box, it displays my first row value that is John. So like this, it will iterate through each row value and display. My execution is completed. So you can see how easily we have read the data which is present in the Excel and stored it into a data table. And we have iterated to do each data in the Excel uh, data table and we displayed in the message box. I hope you, you all liked my video. So please give a comment, give a subscribe my channel and like it. Thank you.